Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Monday on a Double Flag Monday. And I uh, have to tell you something, I had to cut out about five minutes from this video, but uh, I will put it in on Wednesday's video. i got a challenge coming up for you on Wednesday, so let's get right to it. I don't want to cut out any okay, more Okay, it's the next day, and uh, we are going to uh, talk about what we're going to do for today's episode. i got a jam-packed episode getting ready for you today. Uh, the first thing we have to talk about is, of course, we're doing our tribute to the armed forces this month, and our next one up is the United States Space Force. Now, I know what you're thinking. Some of you guys are kind of smirking. You got to smirk. I can see it now. Uh, because you say Space Force, it sounds kind of like, you know, please. You know, the Space Force is actually a really good um, branch of the service, if you know, which is just starting up now, but it's really important. They've been trying to get this going for 25 years, but you know, every president comes in, just keeps passing along. And then we had one president that uh, actually brought it to, to light. And the Space Force is going to cover everything that obviously is in space, you know, satellites, rockets, things like that. But it's also going to cover cyber uh, communications and things like that. And you know, with all the cyber attacks and everything, they're going to have a, a, a military branch just designated to cover all this. It's a fantastic idea. And um, although their flag, you know, looks a little bit similar to the Star Trek insignia, <laughs> I probably, I'm sure their, uh, their uh, anthem is probably the same as it is too, but uh, it's, it's really something that we need. And uh, don't smirk about it. And if you're a young person and if you were going to go into the service and you weren't into, you know, killing people and dealing with uh, IEDs and uh, uh, <laughs> snipers, things like that, and you wanted something a little bit more laid back, that's the place to go into. You know, if I if I had some scouts now, I would I would say, look, the Space Force, if you're into that whole computer thing and you like that. That's a good branch to get into right now. While it's a, a young branch, and you could say, yeah, back in the day when we started this thing. So that's what we're talking about today, the Space Force. Next up, uh, this weekend, as you know, I went to uh, to Zagre Farm Museum in Connect Colchester, Connecticut. What a fantastic time I had. Now, summer shows are traditionally a little bit slower. They're not like a spring or fall show, which is usually hopping because of the weather. And it was hot. It was like Africa hot. I'm telling you, it was humid. It was, everybody was like drenched. And by the time I left there, I was there for about four and a half hours. By the time I left, I was drained. You know, I really should have, you know, hydrated more. But it was a great show. Met a, a bunch of uh, subscribers, fantastic people. Uh, so all the way up from Cape Cod, we had some people. and But all over the place, they came. And, and it wasn't, a lot of them, it wasn't their first time at that show. Which is, I'm, I'm glad to see that the word's getting out and they're enjoying it. You really should get to one of these uh steam shows or tractor shows you would really love it but i have about uh, 10 minutes of, of video that i shot for it and and then i got some uh I, i'll show you what i picked up but i'll show you a couple of uh, subscribers brought a couple gifts down uh my buddy ken and my buddy matthew also uh, brought some stuff and i want to show you that so let's take a look first at the show real quick and then i'll show you what i got Okay, always at these shows, our first stop is to see Bob. And you see, Bob always, I don't know if he does buyouts or whatever, but he gets such stuff, and his prices are just really unbeatable. You know, he has a dollar table, a 50-cent table, and a 25-cent table, and he's constantly moving one from the other to the other to the other. And I'll tell you, you could go there with $5 and get a bucket of all kinds of cool stuff. You screwdrivers are a quarter. This thing's supposed to be inside of here. Files are a quarter, but and everything else is uh, this one's saying. Yeah. Yeah, that goes in, in this bucket. They're a quarter. But everything else is 50. Oh. Yeah. Now, I filmed this section just for my buddy Big Vic because he's a big collector of signage and stuff, but I could not believe the prices on some of these signs. It was like, I got them by. I wonder if they sell any at these prices. Now, if you're looking at these two gentlemen thinking they should be wearing helmets, then you're at the wrong channel. Wow. 
Now, years ago, you could pick up a cute envelope like that for 15 bucks, no longer. This uh, car here was priced at about $125, but what a nice paint job. Now, it had rained the night before, as you could see by the puddle on this table, but the one thing I was looking at, you see these screwdrivers? When I was a kid, these were the first set of screwdrivers I owned, and they were actually very good screwdrivers. I still have a couple today, but uh, boy, they bring back memories. Now I filmed this segment for my buddy John Crane who's in the process of restoring one of these beautiful Airstream trailers. Here are two nice examples in different sizes. I thought he'd get a kick out of that. There's Matthew in the blue shirt in front of this truck. Now my buddy Rob was looking at this rigid tri stand. What a beautiful pipe vice stand. It has the in integrated pipe vice. It has the integrated pipe benders. $15. That was one of the steals of this show. Isn't that nice? This nice antique carpenter's box was a steal at $15. Also, if you look at the corners, it has brass corner plates on there. Real nice. Now this is my buddy Ken who I met at the show, fantastic guy. We had a blast looking at all the different things that were for sale today. Another absolutely fantastic buy was this Cub Cadet tractor for $500. It ran like a top. It sounded like a sewing machine. What a beautiful little tractor that was. $500 or, or best offer. Now, if you look in the distance here, you can see they have a tractor that pulls a kind of a wagon, almost like a hay ride. You get a, a ride all around the grounds, real nice. Take a look at this beautiful Corvair. Always love these cars. This one here is, has a nice color. It's a seafoam green. And uh, they were just beautiful cars. I know Ralph Nader wrote a book called Unsafe at Any Speed and kind of, you know, put these in their demise. Uh, but uh, there were some interesting styling lines on this car and they've become a little bit collectible. Although years ago, you can always pick them up cheap. I think they're getting more and more expensive. This truck, on the other hand, what a beautiful truck this is. Nice, clean lines. Uh, just that kind of truck that you can take anywhere and, 
and uh, you can see what the interior looked like, pretty plain, but you're sitting up nice and high, you got the split windshield, nice flatbed on it, I really like this little truck. Okay, first off, my buddy Ken, who you saw in the video there, uh, we were talking and walking around the whole show, we were having a great time, he's a funny guy, Ken said, I got some stuff for you in the, in the car, so we went back to the where we parked, and he had a couple of... Uh, of bolt cutters and these are not i always love these ornate bolt cutters i still got to get to steve's 48 inch monster but this one here is a uh this one's a number two hk porter you could see here and, and again they're so ornate and things like that and they got the writing on there this one's in actually very good shape and uh you could see this is a, a number two but this one is about I guess 36 inches or so, or maybe 40. It's it's a nice one. And this one's a, you know, it's in good shape. Look at the jaws are really nice on that. You see that? So uh, I'm looking forward to cleaning this up. This is actually a user, something you could use. And then he brought this little one here. And what's funny about this one here is we were talking about how this meets here. Did anybody ever see one? Let me show you a little closer. Now, this is about 12 inches in size, and you can see it, it is an HK Porter, you could see. But uh, if you notice, like, where it meets in the middle here, it's very strange, because usually they have some kind of strength. Because the more, if you were able to adjust this, you would be able to uh, have these jaws get closer together, because you could see how far apart they are, you know? So it's just strange. I've never seen one with this type of of uh connecting in in there if you ever seen if let me know in the comments you can see here 1855 i don't you know i'm assuming that might be the year and this might be one of their early ones and a very interesting uh i'm going to clean this up this is a really nice one too so thanks so much for that ken and then what he originally wanted me to come you know that, that he actually bought to uh give to the, donate to the show was this lantern check out this beautiful lantern is that not and look at that nice ornate glass and uh i'm going to show you how this this unscrews here we're going to clean this up real soon because i just want to hang this up we're going to try and get the dents out of here what a beautiful lantern again uh you know really just just so nice isn't it look at that just a beautiful uh well-made lantern so ken thanks so much for that looking forward to seeing you up at uh, one of the shows okay next up uh our next viewer that brought something to show uh to he actually left it on at my truck uh was matthew and i met matthew just at this show for the first time and i have to tell you something you know how sometimes you meet somebody and right off the bat you're like you're impressed and it takes a lot to impress me i gotta tell you because you know i've been around the block i'm sure a lot of you have too and you know, and this kid is on the ball. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, he's 22 years old, young kid, and uh, just so, you know, the way he, he handles himself and and uh, you could tell the five minutes of talking to him, you say, wow, this he's got something going. This guy is, is on, the, on the ball. And uh, he was an Eagle Scout, I found out later on, which makes total sense. Now I could see, you know, it's so obvious, but um what's so interesting about again we were talking with the show and, and ken and i and, and matthew all talking and uh 22 years old I, he's he has a couple antique you know he likes antiques and things but he has an antique vehicle 1926 dodge now check this out he bought that when he was 14 years old now you tell me how many kids this is a this kid is a an old soul or like you know you could tell um and he, he drives this thing. He drives it to school. He drives it in the snow. And look at, he sent me a video. He just sent me a quick video of him driving in the snow. Check this out. Now that is absolutely fantastic, isn't it? I mean, you could feel it for what it was like being in that car. You see how the dashboards lit up with those those old fashioned lights? I just love it. What a great piece of footage. But uh, anyway, Matthew was a great guy. It was great to meet him. And uh, you'll be meeting him if you come to any of the other shows. He'll be coming to either Kent or Jacktown. He was at Jacktown on Friday. But uh, he'll be coming to uh, to the shows, and we're going to meet up again. Great guy. And also, uh, let me show you what Matthew uh, left now, by my It's funny. Truck. When you go to these shows, you're always back and forth to your truck because you're buying stuff, and then you don't want to walk around with it. So you bring it back, you dump it in your vehicle, and then you go buy more stuff. <laughs> well, when I came back to the vehicle, this was leaning against my, my truck. And, it, and look at it here. It's a, a pretty big 
tool. It's, you know, two feet long. It's got, and uh, I said, well, I said, then I'm looking at him like, I wonder if somebody, like the guy next to me, left it there by accident or somebody left it for me. So I said, I don't know. And I just threw it in the truck. I said, <laughs> either way, it's mine now. But here's what it is. And I, when I'm looking at it, I said, I never saw one of these before. And I'm sure some of you guys are laughing because you probably used them before, but I never did. This is a what they call a chain pipe cutter. And uh, what it is, as you can see, it's uh, basically almost this would be considered like the chain. And it's got cutting wheels in it. Some of them have a lot more cutting wheels. It's missing one here, I think. And uh, it's got these pins that you engage into the bottom hook here around the pipe. Now, from what I could see, I've never used one before. I'm trying to do research on it. From what I see, they said they use these for for different types of pipe that are brittle, like, you know, like cast iron pipe or for earth pipe or, you know, that brown pipe, you know, different pipes that are made that can be snapped or brittle. But uh, a lot of those had wheels that are even closer together. So if you've ever used one of these before, I know we got a ton of plumbers, things like that out there. Let me know in the comments if you ever use them and what type of pipe you use them for so we can all learn from it. But it's really a cool tool and, uh, you know, you could see how that works. If you need, if you had a smaller pipe, you would just bring it into a smaller pin, you know? And then when you wrapped it around the pipe, this would tighten up. You would tighten this up here. And then I guess you would go back and forth a little bit. But from what I was seeing on YouTube, uh, if it's got a lot of wheels, all you have to do is just tighten it and it cracks it by itself. So interesting tool, Matthew. We'll get work. We'll find out more about okay, it. Okay, next up, let's see what I bought. First thing, you know, the guy Bob... Bob, you know, you saw that in the beginning of the video at the, at the show. He's worth the trip, just him alone, is worth the trip to go see this guy. And he gets all kinds of... Buy. I always like the hardware, you know? So I bought... I, I spent less than $20 at Bob's, and I'll show you everything I got. But uh, you see these, you know, the, the, the bigger wood screws, the lag bolts, right? Again, this, this box here was less than $10. And, you know... This, Look at this, stainless set screws, right? Come on, you know these things go. And look here, look. Somebody, $30, right? I got the whole box for less than 10. So I don't know where he gets, he gets buyouts, he gets all kinds of stuff, but I got, and it, it's below that too. Boxes of of uh, screws, and I know Reggie's the only guy right now, his mouth is watering. But anybody else that has bought high hardware in the last six months knows how much this stuff has gone up. So anytime I see it, he threw in a free, <laughs> free uh, uh, keychain. But anytime I see this stuff, I pick it up, you know, because you never, when you're doing a job, the last thing you want to do is have to go out and buy this stuff at full price, you know. So it's always good. Grab it when you can. So I got and that I got from this him. bucket. And uh, now, if you know Bob or you ever see him, the way to buy from Bob is you just grab a bucket and fill it up. And he's not going to go through everything. So he just rounds it off, you know. You know, normally the screwdrivers are 25 cents. This is a 357 Magdad special. Look at that. It was something that he would love to. 25 cents there. Um, I got a couple of dollar hammers. These are Stanley's. Both of them are marked Stanley, you could see here. So that was uh, for a dollar each. Then these were 50, 50 cents for the pliers. We're going to clean these up and a little hammer. And of course, some more. I collect these, you know, any, with the door locks. but and, and more hardware. Again, $20 for everything. That, this and the other box. So how great was Okay, that? next up, I was talking to Matthew at Bob's table for about half an hour. And, I, and Bob just threw out a bunch of saws. I think they were a dollar each, right? He had nice saws. And I said, you know, Matthew, I'm going to pick one of these up. I said, I always wanted to do a project on the show where I take one of these saws and I cut them into sections and I make scrapers out of the saw steel. That's a uh, upcoming episode. So I said, maybe I'll pick up, I bought the saw, and then I'm looking at the saw, and I said, I I never felt a saw so sharp. This thing I don't think was ever used. It must be, an, it's the sharpest saw, and I have a ton of saws. This thing is super sharp, so I said, I can't cut this thing up. You know, it's a Commodore, you see it here? Commodore was made out of York, Pennsylvania, and uh, perfectly balanced, taper ground. Uh, I got to, we got to... I'm going to clean this up and see what we can do with this, but uh, I ain't going to cut this one up. It's too nice. And then I picked this up. Look at this. Uh, <laughs> and you're, uh, some of you long time subscribers, Did, didn't you buy one of these already? Yes, but this one here, I can't pass these by. This one was like $15 with the case. 
and it's in really nice shape, you know. But, uh, you know, another World War II vintage. And I'll tell you a story about this when I'm cleaning this up. I'll tell you why I'm so attracted to these things. It has to do with the my good friend Sergeant Nicolosi. And uh, so I'm going to clean this. I want to do something as a tribute to him. That's why I got so this. So I was good, right? I only spent about, you know, $25 or so. or th No, maybe $40, something like that. But anyway, I was good. I didn't buy a lot of stuff. But then all of a sudden, it, I saw it. I saw it and I said, oh my goodness, I wanted one of those. Ever since I'm, ever since I'm a kid, I wanted one of these. And it's a big item. And uh, the guy that was selling it, his name is Jamie, nice guy. We started talking and that's it. I just said, look what I bought. And here it is. I always wanted one of these. Yep, it's a full size metal aluminum traffic light. And this is, these are kind of rare because you don't see too many with the, it just got the arrow on the bottom, the turn, but the larger, you can see it's a larger lens on the bottom. And uh, look at this, it's just, what a piece of work this is, huh? It's, and it's big, you know, it's over three feet and it weighs about 35 pounds. It's just, it's tremendous. If you never see it, glass lenses, it's got the red, the yellow, and the, the green arrow. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking. What, what, what are you going to do with a trap? I just always wanted one. And uh, he's got it. It's plugged in that you can you know, work. I'll show you later on when it gets a little dark. I'll show you what it looks like. It's just the coolest thing ever. Let me show you what the inside looks like. Now, you unscrew here. It's got a little butterfly nut. You open it up. And you can see here when you open it up, you have the glass, you know, the glass red lens. You have the reflector regular 110 light bulb this i think is a halogen in here and then this opens up and you got access you can see here you got your relay you got your access it's just this thing is made i mean this is well this is no joke look at that and uh so i had to get this you know and i paid big money for this this wasn't cheap i paid a uh, hundred and fifteen dollars for this. The guy originally wanted 175, but after you talk to these guys for a while, they just want to get rid of you. You know what I mean? I got that kind of personality. So there it is. Isn't that cool or what? Can't really appreciate it until I let me move down away and give you a, a distant view. Okay, here we are in front of my house. <laughs> Check that out. That's pretty damn bright, right? It's blowing out the lens. I can't even get a good shot. Of it. Honestly, I never realized how bright traffic lights really are. So as you can see, I told you I was good, but then I kind of got bad at the end of the show. But I don't regret it. I love that traffic light. I think it's the coolest thing ever. Uh, anyway, I don't want to drag on. It's a Monday. It was a bit of a mosh today. Hope you have a great day. And uh, again, nice meeting up with everybody that from the subscribers from the channel. Uh, special thanks to our buddies in the Space Force. If anybody's in us, let us know. And I hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye. That's Trixie, that's Pipes, and that's Stripes.